Hi everyone, welcome to workshop 5 and today we're going to be talking about digital forensics. So today we're going to go over various different things. We're going to talk about what is digital forensics, the types of challenges that you're going to face when coming across this category in PICO CTF, numbering systems, encoding, file headers, metadata, and we're going to also talk about hex editors. So when we discuss forensics, if we think about traditional forensics, what we think of is a crime scene. So a crime scene has just occurred and the forensics teams come in and they collect the evidence, they examine the crime, they look at the scene, they take notes, everything they else they have to do. And basically the goal of doing all of this is to solve the crime or, you know, arrive at how the crime occurred, what happened, the different timestamps to kind of map out a story of how the crime exactly took place. In digital forensics, it's very similar, but now we're working with a different landscape. So basically, in digital forensics, it's the same thing, but it's collecting, examining, analyzing, and reporting digital electronic evidence. And the goal is to reconstruct prior events to find exactly, you know, to find out exactly what happened. So when you're doing digital forensics challenges in CTFs, you come across you know, files that you might have to um, uncorrupt or to see what's happening within a file, file format and extensions, memory dumps, packet captures, files including hidden data like steganography. These are just some of the challenges that you might come across when working on digital forensic challenges. Some background information that is important for solving these challenges includes being able to understand different numbering systems like binary, hex, base64, etc. and being able to recognize them. In last year's workshop, we did a deep dive into these numbering systems and converting them from one form to another. So if we just go briefly over some numbering systems that are common, we have binary, which is base2, and many of you may know that computers work in binary, which is either 1 or 0. A single one or zero is the smallest unit of data and is called a bit. And to make it own, make it more understandable, it can be converted into hexadecimal. So 16 total values represented by a single digit. We have, it goes from zero to the letter F. The, let, uh, the number 10 is represented by A. Number 11 represented by B. Number 12 represented by C. And so on and so forth. And each hexadecimal digit represents four bits. And that's known as base 16. And then we have ASCII, um, which is, you know, computer reads data as binary to represent letters, symbols, and an encoding scheme must be followed. And the most popular encoding scheme is ASCII. So when you're faced with any challenges where you have, um, you know, binary to hex conversions or hex to ASCII conversions, or you might be presented data when you're especially working with various files in a different format than what you're used to. You might be presented in binary or especially a lot of, you know, like files are in hex and you might need to convert them to ASCII for, you know, you to be able to read it properly. So it's really important to be able to recognize what numbering system you're working with and to be able to recognize how to convert that. Obviously, manually converting all of that is going to take a very long time. So I'm just going to show you this tool right here. And this tool is called, um, it's available at rapidtables.com. And this just allows you to convert from ASCII to hex to binary, decimal, base64, whatever you have. So for example, let's say we have hello text. And hello in hexadecimal would be 4865, 6C, 6C, 6F. In binary, this is how it would be represented. In decimals, this is how it would be represented. In base 64, this is how it would be represented. Um, this is a good tool to keep in handy when solving these challenges instead of manually doing the conversions yourself. Converting from different forms as such is also known as encoding. And what encoding is, it's the transformation of data from one form to another. And it's useful for transmission of data, efficient storage of data. Um, for example, converting hexadecimal to ASCII is a form of encoding. Um, last 
last week's workshop we talked about cryptography and encryption so this encoding is not to be confused with encryption encryption is also the transformation of data from one form to another but an encryption algorithm is used alongside a key and if the key is unknown the message cannot be reversed so in encoding we don't have a key we're just simply transforming data from one form to another and it can later be transformed back to its original form uh, and it's easy to figure out what the original message was where you may see all of this information, you know, coming to use with the different different numbering systems in a, is in file format. So it's really important to understand file format. And so we're going to spend some time learning about file format, some tips, tricks when solving some of these CTF challenges. Let's start off with file extension. You know, um, a file extension usually gives you an indication of what type of file it's going to be. For example, if you have an image file that's called image.png, you know it's going to be an image file or image.jpg, you know, you know that that will be an image file. Or if you have a .txt or .doc or .pdf, then you know it's going to be, you know, a text file, a PDF file. If you have an MP4, you know it's going to be a movie file. And we're so used to seeing this one working with files that we are used to looking at the extensions. And when we look at the extensions, we're comfortable with what that file is going to be just based on the extension. But what if we can change the extension of the file? Will that change the type of file that it is? Will the file, if we changed a JPEG file from to a text file, will the JPEG file now be a text file? Um, no, the file will probably, you know, um, not open up the way that it's going to on your computer. And you can test that out if you want. You can go change the extension of any of your, let's say, change a doc file to a PNG and see what happens. So there's something called file headers, which determine the file, uh, which determine the type of a file and not actually the extension. So let's talk a little bit more about the file header. So file header or file signatures, also known as the magic bytes of a file, tell you what type of file a file is. And these file headers are usually two to four bytes long. This, um, these extensions can be viewed using a hex viewer, hex editor, which we're going to get to in a little while. And just as an example, PDF files have a file header of 25, 50, 44, 46, 2D and hexadecimal value. So if you see that, if you're examining a file in a PDF file in a hex viewer editor, uh, you'll see that extension in the beginning. Another useful command to know for the command line is file command, which will tell you what the file header has been interpreted as allowing you to figure out what type of file it is. So we're going to take a look at some of those examples in just a second, but let's talk about metadata. What is metadata? It's, it's a hidden data which provides more information about the context of a file's data. Different types of files have different metadata. So images have EXIF data embedded in them, and EXIF allows uh, data such as the camera make, GPS coordinates, date, and time to be stored within the image file. And a good view to view the metadata in, a, um, in the command line is called the EXIF tool. And we're going to take a look at that in just a second as well. It's not easy to view, you know, all of this information uh, without special commands, tools, or um, a hex editor. So one of the tools I recommend everyone to use for digital forensic challenges is a hex editor. And in just a second, I'm going to show you um, an online hex editor that you can use for free. And it's really important to bookmark this website, and it's going to be like linked in the description below. So what exactly is a hex editor? Well, a hex editor is a computer program that allows for manipulation of the fundamental binary data that constitutes a computer file. And that's the definition from Wikipedia. So hex editors are useful for examining and fixing corrupt files, reverse engineering. There are a lot of challenges where the file headers have been corrupted and it's your job to fix them. So this is where a hex editor would really come handy in these challenges. And here's some free hex editors. So hxd on windows um hexed hex.it which i'm going to show you just right now is a free online tool that you can use that anyone can access and these are all free tools that you are free to download and use if you want or you can use the online version if you're comfortable doing so so let's do a challenge now i'm going to be focusing on this challenge called information from the forensics category 
says files can always be changed in a secret way. Can you find the flag? And they've given us a JPEG file right here. It says look at the details of the file. Make sure to submit the flag as Pico CTF. So I'm going to copy the link and go into the web shell and type in my username and password. Okay, so let's make it bigger so that we could see. Oh no, we have to type in our password again and our username. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so once we've logged in, we're going to use the wget function to get this file onto our system. So we've downloaded the file and if you remember from last time if we go ls we should be able to list and we should have the file so now we're going to do cat file cat.jpg to get some more information about the file so when we do that it gives us more information it tells us that you know that this is a jpeg file so now we know that the file is actually saved at, as what it should be saved as and let's just you know let's just do file for lyrics.txt, which is saved here, which should show us that, okay, so lyrics.txt is an ASCII file. It's an ASCII text file. So let's go back to our cat example and use the exif tool on cat.jpg to get some more, um, to get some more information about the metadata. So here's some more information about the metadata of the file. So it tells us the file permissions, the type of file, you know, it tells us copyright notice, license, the image width, the image height, encoding process. It gives us a lot of important information. And sometimes also, you know, the camera that it was taken with, the date that it was taken is also available. So right now, this is um, the file information that we have. And it's giving us the file access date and time. So we have a lot of information. So EXIF tool is really helpful for JPEG images as well. Now let's take a look at this file in a hex editor. So you can open files from here. And I've already opened, um, I've already saved this file onto my computer. So right here, we have this file right here. So we're seeing a bunch of information and you know, it just looks like a bunch of gibberish, really. So that's important to see. So now what we can do um, is, as I mentioned earlier, something called file header file signatures. There's a really cool tool that I'm going to show you. And this website's also linked in the description below, but it tells you kind of what the file header and signature should be for each type of file. So we are working here with the JPEG file. So let's try to find a JPEG file. So right here. So a JPEG file, this is the kind of header that we should see FFD8 in hex. So let's see if we can see that. And that is exactly what we see right here. We see FFD8. So that's lovely. We see that. So now, what? how can we find the hex file? Because if we look at this image, this is the image that we get. So how can we figure out the flag in this scenario? So let's go back and let's take a look at, you know, let's take a look at some of the hex and see what's going on. And as I'm looking closely at some of the information, I see something very interesting and, um, I'm going to give everybody a second to just see if they notice that to I encourage everybody to open up this file on in their hex editor on their desktop and see if they're able to find what exactly I'm talking about. So I'm just going to leave that here just for a bit. And you can also open this file in a hex editor, um, which might make it easier for you to um, read the information. So you can use whatever, you can use an, um, a tool on your computer or you can use an online tool, whichever you feel comfortable using. So I'm not sure if it's obvious yet, but I see this little piece of information 
and that looks like encoding to me and just based on a little bit of you know um, experience it looks like base 64 encoding so now i'm going to go back and i'm going to go to that website that i earlier shared with everyone which is called the rapid tables and i'm going to put this into base 64 section and see what i get and when I put that into the base 64 section, I get the ASCII text, which should be the flag. So let's go back here and submit our flag. And there we go. So um, as you saw that with these challenges, you really have to dig deep into the file. So this is really truly a forensics challenge is digging and trying to look around for clues and see what you can, what information you can find out about the file, the file structure, the file data, if there's any metadata that's hidden. A lot of times the flag might be hidden in the metadata. So you never know. So it's really important to get creative and, you know, think a little bit outside the box. So that is everything that we covered in today's lecture. We've covered it. Uh, thank you for your time. And here are some helpful resources, which are all listed in the description below. A reminder to visit the resource hub, the CanHack resource hub, and please watch the Digital Forensics recordings, Digital Forensics 101 and Digital Forensics 102. Those do a really deep dive into digital forensics and they cover some of these areas much in depth. We also talk about network, um, analyzing networking protocols and packet captures and um, additional information that is useful for, you know, that is useful for the CTF challenge. So it's really encouraged that everybody goes and watches that. Uh, thank you for your time and until next time, we'll see you in workshop six.